students. I'm going to need to go through this fairly quickly so that it will be short enough to fit into YouTube. But you please pause the video and so forth as you need in order to fit in all of the notes. All right, here we're going to be talking about pressure centers and wind. Um, by pressure centers, uh, we can really also call these pressure systems. And do yourself a favor and look up some weather maps right now and look at what these pressure systems look like on a weather map because they're rather large. Um, I mean, these can easily be the size of like half of the United States. Okay, some things to remember. We've talked about this, that winds move because of pressure differences. That thing we call the pressure gradient. There's a difference in pressures over, a, uh, uh, over some distance. And those pressure differences are caused by the sun. And this is very key to remember, is that wind moves towards low pressure. Very important. Remember that, remember that, remember that. That will help you to understand a lot of what we're going to do on the rest of this um, page and the next page. And we'll be talking about the uh, global wind directions on the next page, and or in video two. The global wind directions are primarily due to the Coriolis effect. The Coriolis effect is something we've talked about before, in that we have the Coriolis effect um, that we see in air masses and in, well, air currents and in ocean currents. And this is due to Earth's rotation. In other words, it's due to Earth spinning on its axis. Okay, now, low pressure systems versus high pressure systems. These things will generally be exactly opposite of one another. So keep that in mind as far as noticing a pattern of what the information is. Like here for low pressure, or lows, like if, if, in, if in a weather report you hear something like, oh, there's a low moving into the area, that means that there's low air pressure moving into the area. It does not mean low temperatures necessarily, and highs moving into the area in a weather report does, means high air pressure, not necessarily high temperatures. Um, as we've talked about, the lows are uh, less than a very specific number that I've told you to memorize. Hopefully you already know it before I write this in here, but we're talking about less than 1,013 millibar. The low pressure is usually going to be about 990 millibars up to 112 millibars. Now, it could be lower than that. It could be, but that would be an unusual kind of circumstance, and it would be very significant of something like a thunderstorm, tornado, hurricane. It, that would be generally bad news. Now, with the high pressures meaning high air pressures, of course, that's going to be higher than that magical 1,013 millibar number. These high pressures are usually 1,014 to 1,039 millibar. Again, they could be higher than that, but that's very unexpected. The official names for low pressure systems and high pressure systems are cyclones for the low and anticyclone for the high. Again, things being exact opposites. Anti would be like a prefix to mean the opposite of uh, the word it uh, precedes, so anticyclone being the opposite of cyclone. Now, for the weather associated with high pressure, I'm sorry, with low pressure and with high pressure, we've got a few things to add in here. Um, think for a minute about what I've taught you before with rising air. In a low pressure system, the air will be rising. And as the air rises, it cools. As it cools, it will condense. And then therefore form clouds. Very good. OK, so with this rising air, we will have clouds develop. So rising air, comma, clouds. And where there's clouds, there can eventually be precipitation, rain, snow, hail, whatever the case is. So rising air, clouds, precipitation,
and couple the precipitation with these faster winds, and basically we're saying that these uh, low pressure systems would be bringing the storms. So rising air clouds, precipitation and storms, faster winds, this is generally the bad weather. The high pressure systems are then the opposite. The air here is sinking. It's only going to get warmer, so it's only more able to hold on to its um, humidity, so it does not form clouds, and if there's no clouds, there's no precipitation, there's no precipitation, there's no storms, hence sinking air and clear skies. The high pressure systems also generally have slower winds and or possibly calm air, so potentially no wind at all, and is associated with good weather. Okay, now over here, what we're talking about is the movement of the air on the surface. Like if we were in a plane looking down and if we could see the air, which generally we can't unless there's clouds in it, but if we could see the air, what would it be doing? Now for low pressure systems, these up here, keep in mind that wind always moves towards low pressure. So in these low pressure systems, the air movement on the surface will always be inward, inward towards that low pressure. And that is why I drew these arrowheads on for you already. But go ahead and do the same for in the southern hemisphere and for low pressure system, it's still going to move, be moving inward. And put your arrowheads on there on the inside. But what's different about the, uh, the air movement in the northern versus southern hemisphere for a low pressure system is the overall direction of spin, which in the northern hemisphere, it's counterclockwise as it goes inward. In the southern hemisphere, it's clockwise as it goes inward. Then following just a, an appropriate pattern of opposites, if wind is going inward towards low pressure, then it must obviously be going outward, away from high pressure. That'll be true in both the northern and southern hemispheres. Be sure to include the arrowheads on there, but this time draw them on the outer edges. And notice again the clockwise, counterclockwise kind of pattern. In the northern hemisphere, a high pressure system is going outward and clockwise. High pressure system in the southern hemisphere is going outward, but counterclockwise. So that's air movement just on the surface. But over here, we're going to look at, in three dimensions, what the air would be doing. So, whereas in the northern hemisphere with low pressure, oh, I'm sorry, in any hemisphere, low pressure systems, the air is moving inward on the surface, then it's going to do the opposite um, up top. So, whereas it's going inward, and so we can call that, the, say that the air is converging, or converges, then up here the air diverges. So, we're going to draw these in with representative arrows. The air will generally be a bit warmer on the surface, so we have warm air converging. And as that warm air rises, it will, of course, cool. So then we're flipping to blue arrows, show those diverging. As that warm air rises and cools, it will condense to form what? Clouds, so draw that in. Now everything is going to be the opposite for the high pressure systems. We have cool air up on the top coming in. That cool air will start to sink. It can warm up a bit and then diverges at the surface. There's no cloud development here um, since the air is sinking and as it sinks it's only going to get warmer and less likely to condense into clouds so no cloud development.